Esther chapter 2. And I'm going to start reading the verse 5. No disrespect to the word, but it's the real thing that I'm reading. So, um, you ought to see it. Esther chapter 2, starting at verse 5, reads, Now there was in the citadel of Susa a Jew of the tribe of Benjamin named Mordecai, son of Jared, and the son of Shimei, the, the son of Kish, who had been carried into exile from Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Among those taken captive to Jehoiachin, king of Judah, Mordecai had a cousin named Hadassah, who he had brought up because she had neither father nor mother. This young woman, who was also known as Esther, had a lovely figure and was beautiful. Mordecai had taken her as his own daughter when her father and mother had died. When the king's order and etiquette had been proclaimed, many young women were brought to the city of Susa and put under the care of Hagen. Esther also was taken to the king's palace and trusted her. Who had charge, who had charge of the harem. She pleased him and won his favor. Immediately he provided her with her beauty treatments and special food. He assigned to her seven female attendants, selected from the king's palace, and moved her and her attendants into the best place in the harem. Esther had not revealed her nationality and family background because Mordecai had forbidden her to do so. Every day he walked back and forth near the courtyard of the harem to find out how Esther was and what was happening to her. Before a young woman, uh, woman before a young woman's turn came to go into the heat services, she had to complete 12 months of beauty treatments prescribed for the women, six months with oil and myrrh, and six with perfumes and cosmetics. And this is how she would go to the king. Anything she was given to her to take with her from the harem of the king to the king's palace. In the evening she would go there and in the morning return to another part of the hand to the care of Shashat's the king Judah, who was in charge of the concubines. She would not return to the king unless he was pleased with her and summoned her by name. When the turn came for Esther, the young woman Mordecai had a daughter, the daughter of his uncle Abihel, to go to the king. She asked for nothing other than what had the king Judah, who was in charge of the parents, suggested. And Esther won the favor of everyone who saw her. She was taking the king Xerxes into the royal residence, the tenth month of the month of Tibet, in the seventh year of his reign. Now the king was attracted to Esther than to any other other women, and she won his favor and approval more than any other other virgins. So he set a royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. And the king gave a great bank, Esther's bank, for all his nobles and officials. He proclaimed a holiday throughout the provinces and distributed gifts with royal liberality. And God has blessed you to read and hear and do in this word. Let us pray. Gracious Father, I thank you. And I pray now that you move me out of the way and that your Holy Spirit bring me into this house. That the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in the sight of the Lord, my spirit. And my reading. Amen. I apologize for that, that long reading. Y'all might say, okay, G, what are you what you trying to set up here? Well, what I believe I'm trying to set up, I told Pastor Allison this is I'm trying to follow up her sermon. What I got out of her sermon last week that we have to listen to God's strategic plan so that we will be able to execute that in which he's called us to do. And in order to follow a strategic plan, sometimes we have to come out of our comfort zone. Sometimes we have to do some things that we really don't want to do. But because he's given the plan, we are ready and we are willing and we're disciplined and we are, we are, um, we're hearing his voice clear. We're able to move the way he would have us to move. And as I was listening to the sermon, and as Pastor Allison and I were talking this week about the sermon, what came to my mind is this. We have to also be strategically placed. Yeah. A better word, strategically positioned. Yeah. And so I thought about who in the Bible, there's so many people I could have thought about who were strategically positioned for a particular time, but Esther came to my mind first. And so I didn't really want to go into the exploit. 
exploits of Esther. What I wanted to do was talk about Esther's process. Because I believe we as a church body were strategically positioned here at 3210 Oliver to do a great work for Christ. Last week when I was talking to Sorogeny and Wayne, y'all may not know, or some of you do know, I know you know that they had to clean up a whole lot of feces yeah. off of the steps and off the door. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Feces on the doors and on the steps of the church? Yes, feces. Yes, feces. Why are you emphasizing the word feces? Because we know that is a gross act to do on them doors out there. And to some people, that would have discouraged us. And I was a little touched, yes. Why would somebody do that? But I have to understand that Proverbs, we have been strategically placed. We have been strategically positioned to where people may have to weakly come and put feces on our doorstep. And it's going to be our job, guess what? Not to complain about it, but just to clean it up and wait for them to do it again. Oh, come on. When God puts you in a place where people need to be healed, people need to be delivered, people need to be loved, people need to be ministered to, we got to be willing to experience everything.
discipleship this morning. My prayer life has gotten a little different since we moved up in here. There's some things going on that kind of get you fearful if you want to look at it from a natural sense. There's a lot of shooting going on. There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of transactions going on. And we have a nerve to bring Jesus into the neighborhood. Because some people's stories don't matter. When you're in the place of being an abuser, and when you are the one who has been abused, sometimes you gotta look your abuser in the face and say, you're not doing that to me anymore. I'm not succumbing to your control anymore. We, our child, if we look at our own stories, you can go out here and tell somebody, you don't have succumb to anybody's story anymore. You don't have to succumb to somebody else's control. You can look them in the face and say, I've got a savior to live from the inside of me. And honestly, no matter what you try to do to me, you cannot win. Esther, because she was naturally beautiful, was funny is how God hooked stuff up. Now, I didn't have time to read chapter 1. In chapter 1, King Xerxes had a party. And at the party, they were allowed to drink, that's what the text said, as much as they wanted to drink. And in verse 10, it said, after my paraphrase, said, no, nah, I ain't doing that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She didn't do what the king told her to do, but the king got angry. So he consulted his folks, and they told him to strip her of her crown. Stripping her of her crown opened the way for a queen to replace her. In the process, Mordecai, uh -huh, a little strategic, God is a God in school with Esther. Yes. Tell her what to do. Yes. Tell her how to do. Yes. Checking in with her daily. Yes. And she was getting ready to be positioned oh, to do something great for the kingdom. Yes. So now she gets put and she gets chosen to be with the eunuch who gets to be with her for 12 months. He's probably timing it. Sometimes, y'all, as we go through our process and we are being strategically positioned, we have to be patient. That's right. That's right. Because God is making us up. He's fixing us up. He's strengthening us up. He's educating us with what we need to be effective. We are in a neighborhood that needs a whole lot of help. But we're going to have to be strategic. We can't just move haphazardly yes, yes. in the name of doing the good thing. <laughs> you have to be strategic. You have to do the God thing. You have to do this thing right. And sometimes it's those simple things like feeding. I hate we had to cancel this past thing, but we're we going to do it this coming Saturday no matter what. Because it's important that this community see us because we have been strategically positioned to help this community. I don't want to hear that the church has lost its power. I don't want to hear that the church is ineffective. If that's the narrative y'all want to tell, go somewhere else. That's not what I mean. That's not what I mean, Travers Story. We will be successful. We will make a difference. We will present the fire of Christ crucified and resurrected, walking with all power. That's what we're going to do. Nobody can stop us from doing that. 
Him. Yes. You gotta keep letting them. Gotta keep letting them. Keep letting them. Keep letting them. Woo! God strategically positioning you for something great. Don't let great be defined by this year. Let great be defined by how you enter and how you incorporate Christ into your conversation and into your witness. Because it's about impact.
Thank you. 